Does anyone feel like we were already here not that long ago? <laughs> Alright guys, it's that time again. Let's talk 2024 fashion trends. Now, whether you like trends or not, they're an undeniable part of the fashion ecosystem. Fashion is cyclical, and one season something is in, and the next season it's not. Now, how I view trends, I view them as an opportunity, if you will. I personally like to stick to my personal style. However, trends provide me access to styles that I feel like could enhance my personal style, that may not be readily available at other times. So I like to look and I like to read, one, to see which trends are new, which trends are an evolution from a previous trend, and which trends are here to stay. So whether you want to know what the hot new item is to buy, or you're just curious to see if there's anything that might help you update your wardrobe, stick around. Now, this is a very pared down list. There are a ton of things trending, and I certainly don't think that you want to stick around for a multi-hour video. Or maybe you do. But I've chosen six trends that really excited me and that I thought were interesting. If there's one comment that I can make before we get into discussing the actual trends, I was really excited to see so much overlap between menswear and womenswear. As a person who personally enjoys a more androgynous approach to his style, I really like being able to take from womenswear and menswear in equal parts to combine and make my own unique style. But the nice thing that I noticed is that a lot of what was trending for women was trending for men and vice versa. It seems like we're really bridging the gap and we're making a bigger stride towards a more gender neutral approach to style, which personally excites me a lot. All right guys, without further ado, let's get into this list. So the first trend we have on this list is called girlcore. Now girlcore intrigued me because it was an evolution of what we were seeing in 2023. We were definitely seeing a lot of feminine romantic styles on the runways. And I actually think girlcore is interesting because to me, it felt like an evolution of the ultra popular Barbie core trend that we saw in 2023. So girlcore is defined as all things soft and feminine. We're talking lace, ribbons, bows, tulle skirts, chiffons, anything soft, delicate, and dare I say, with a slightly more youthful ingenuish feel, if you will. Now, with Barbie core in 2023, it was hyper feminine. It was glitzy, it was glamorous, and dare I say, almost cartoonish in some of the elements like the giant platform shoes, which don't get me wrong, I personally love. We're talking neon colors, right? Ultra bright, ultra vibrant. Girl core feels a little bit dreamier, a little bit softer. You could do pretty delicate bows or you could do large ones if you so choose. But even the color palette tends to be a little bit softer. Instead of Barbie pink, we're seeing more of the millennial pink, which is a separate trend of its own, but I'm looping in with girlcore because I really noticed that a lot of those soft feminine styles were done in a softer, more muted pink, which really lends itself well to the silhouettes. When I was reading about this trend, I was particularly excited because brands like Molly Goddard and Simone Rocha seem like the core brands, right? two brands that really embody this aesthetic to a T. And I cannot wait to see more people embracing these two brands because they are two of my favorites. So for men, we have the soft boy trend. So while this isn't exactly new, it's more of an evolution, we've been slowly but surely seeing a shift in menswear. Not to say that the days of traditional tailoring, structure, workwear are gone. No, not at all. But we've been seeing a subtle shift towards a softer approach to masculinity. We're seeing designers really embrace traditionally feminine aspects and incorporate those into menswear to create a new, more updated look. And we're calling this soft boy. What we're seeing is a gentler, more blended color palette, softer fabrics, a more fluid expression of gender, draping, flowers, you know, 
appliques, brooches, adornments, crystals, and jewels. Even sometimes silhouettes like the tweed jacket that was popularized in women's wear, a la Chanel. I know I personally got excited because I like a more, dare I say, blouse style or even like a blouson jacket style. And that is readily available in the soft boy trend. I particularly like too when designers juxtapose the softness with more traditional structure and tailoring as it creates a really visually interesting look. It's about time that the men steal from the women because women have been incorporating men's wear, or I should say designers have been incorporating men's wear into women's wear for generations now. And if I dare say, it's an exciting time in men's fashion just to see new silhouettes, different fabrics. I personally love it. So, surprise, surprise, not really. <laughs> We're seeing the return of the quiet luxury trend. Now listen, there have been countless video essays, blog posts, articles, magazine articles about quiet luxury, what it represents, why it's bad, why it's great, the who's who of fashion, the if you know, you know brands, and what does that mean? Now, it's a very divisive trend, and there's nothing that I could offer in this video here today that would give you any more insight into why the trend is good or bad beyond what many of other content creators and magazines have already said. Personally, it's not a trend for me. I don't see myself dressing for quiet luxury as I'm not a fan of labels, right? The logo mania trend that was so popular like in 2016, 2017 was not for me. I don't like that type of fashion, but I enjoy a little bit of loud luxury. I like bold colors, pieces that make you stop because they're so eye-catching or unconventional. That's what I personally prefer. But what I will say about the minimalist aspect of quiet luxury is that I have found that when your color palette is very pared down, you're not doing a lot of visual detail, that you really end up focusing on the cut, the construction, and the fabric of the garment. And that is where I find some of the nicest most quality pieces come from. One of my favorite purchases of all time was a pair of white Bottega Veneta trousers I got from Saks. Those pants are everything. I love them so much and I did not expect to like them so much because minimalism just really isn't my thing, but those pants work hard in my wardrobe. So what I would say is that quiet luxury might not be for you, but now is the time, while this trend is hot, to shop for those really good wardrobe essentials, to shop for those really amazing foundational pieces that will carry you through and complement all of your loud luxury purchases. So the sheer trend is making its way on back. Personally, I am very enthused for this one as I love a sheer moment. We have seen countless sheer dresses on the red carpets and we're even seeing some male celebrities embrace the trend as well. I am all for it as long as it's done tastefully. You want to do a little, a little hint, a little suggestion, right? Just a little, a little, a little sneak peek, but not the full thing, which I think is amazing. And with the sheer trend, you get the possibility to layer in an interesting way. So you can wear sheer pieces under more traditional pieces, like for me. I actually love wearing a sheer mesh top underneath a blazer just because it breaks up the silhouette a little bit and it catches the eye where you're thinking, oh, you're wearing a shirt, but I can see a little bit of your chest. Interesting. I think sheer overlays on a traditional or maybe more classic piece think a sheer overlay over a dress or even I have a Simone Rocha t-shirt that is plain cotton with tulle layered over top of it just to give some texture, right? And visual interest to a very, you know, tried and true piece. Now with the sheer trend, you can take it as far as you would like, or you can pull it back if you're not quite comfortable. There really are options for, for any occasion. You can do sheer skirts, sheer trousers, sheer tops, add sheer details like a sheer organza bow, 
Even for the men, there were some beautiful, beautiful sheer pieces on the runway. This suit is so amazing. That is a piece I need to have in my closet. I will hunt it down if I can. It definitely, for men, challenges the norms, but I like that. And I think we should, right? Now, is it for everyone? Not so much, but maybe if it piques your interest, consider investing a little bit into this trend. I have a feeling that this trend will end up sticking around for a lot longer than people think. And personally, for me, I like that as I still think that there's a lot that we can do with this trend in ways that maybe we haven't quite seen just yet. All right, large bags are trending for both men and women. I think we've reached the apex of the micro bag trend and the tiny bag trend where the bags are so small, they really just function more like a charm for your larger bags. <laughs> and fashion being the pendulum that it is, it swung this way with totally impractical, cartoonishly small bags, and now we swung back the other way, back to the large, large bags that we were seeing in the early 2000s. So, practicality is at the forefront here. You can put anything in these super large bags. A water bottle, all of your makeup, your wallet, your car keys, maybe a pair of shoes, maybe your entire life. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm just, I'm just messing. But it really is something, right, to be able to carry such a large bag. I can tell you that for me, I won't be participating. I have a tote from Isemiyake that I like, which is probably the largest bag that I own. But any larger than that is bad because I'm the type that if I see that there's space, I'm going to add more into it. And I don't want to weigh my shoulders down which I was dying when Glamour Magazine made the, the joke that we should start doing our shoulder exercises now because they're right. They're right. Big bags tend to be stuffed and, and your shoulder hurts after a while. The one thing about these extra large bags is that they tend to lean casual because they tend to be more practical. They tend to be a little bit more slouchy. However, if large bags are your thing, you are in luck. Some, right? are very beautiful. I know this particular style from Louis Vuitton, from Pharrell's collection, is so stunning in this metallic rose gold. I am not partial to the trend, but I might make it an exception for this bag because it's everything. But what do you think? Are you giving up on your small bags and moving to the large bags? Let me know in the comment section down below. The last trend I want to touch on for both our guys and gals are short shorts, which, all right, the last trend on the list, short shorts for both our guys and gals. Now, <laughs> interesting that short shorts are considered to be a 2024 spring trend when we also saw capris featured on trend lists, so I'm like, what, what What is it? Are we doing long, warm weather pants or short pants? But I guess both things can be in vogue at the same time. For our men, this is not a new concept. And I would say that they've been trending frequently enough that while doing my research, I saw an article highlighting short shorts on runways for men from probably as early as like 20. 12, 2013. We're seeing short shorts though for men, this time in a more formal, right? More business oriented styling. Now, can you wear shorts like this to the office? Probably not, unless you work in a very casual setting. But these shorts are done in structured fabrics, right? They're tailored, they're crisp, and they're paired with more traditional menswear pieces like button downs. I even saw one look, which was a button-down, a sweater, and shorts in a matching color, which makes sense in that it's something a little bit more revolutionary compared with something that feels a little bit more traditional and a little bit more familiar, right? So it's bringing balance in that aspect. But you certainly don't have to do it in that way as well. You can certainly wear it casually, which I personally find short shorts tends to lend itself best to for 
men. Now for women, I did not think it was possible for the shorts to get shorter, but they have gotten shorter according to Vogue. In fact, some cuts were shaped like a pair of men's briefs. So if that's your vibe, you're in luck. You can find it. We're definitely seeing, right, three inch hemlines and shorter. So again, not a revolutionary concept, but I liked the fabrications and the way that the shorts were styled. We're seeing satins, silks, wools, velvets, all very interesting and luxurious fabrics. So not reinventing the wheel here, just reiterating on something that we love and we know well. So guys, that's it for today's video. Sorry if it was a little bit all over the place. I decided to do this one unscripted just because I thought it would be fun to look at the articles and talk to you guys in real time. All of the articles that I looked at will be linked below in the description box so that you can go and take a read yourself. Let me know! Of the six trends I mentioned, which is your favorite and which is your least favorite? Are there any particular trends that I did not mention in today's video that you're keen on wearing? Let me know in the comment section down below. Looking forward to having an interesting dialogue with you guys. As always, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with a loved one as that helps me out so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy New Year!